Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. This video takes a look at the tactical and strategic lessons learned by Iran's and Russia's air power following two distinct engagements. The 12-day conflict between Iran and Israel, and Ukraine's covert operation targeting Russia's strategic bomber fleet. It must be said that had the Iranian Air Force possessed Sukhoi 35 fighters, and maintained the capability to protect both aircraft and their home air bases, Israeli strikes, particularly those directed against the capital Tehran, would have been significantly reduced in scale. Israel's tactic was to transit to Azerbaijani airspace and reach the Caspian Sea, establishing a launch station for standoff weapons there. This could have been effectively countered through the deployment of a compact fleet of modern fighters, such as the Sukhoi 35. These long-range aircraft could have maintained continuous combat air patrols over the maritime Caspian Sea environment, leveraging their advanced high-power radar to detect and track incoming intruders. While such a threat would likely prompt Israel to intensively escort its fighter bombers with platforms like the F-35 armed with AIM-120 air-to-air missiles, the Superflanker's high kinematic performance could have rendered the establishment of a standoff launch station over the Caspian infeasible. This difficulty stems from the long distances involved and the consequent low fuel reserves available for sustained air combat maneuvering. Consequently, Iran's absence of credible air power resulted in the severe strategic cost of leaving its capital exposed to standoff missiles. Addressing the inherent fragility of air power to such strikes and covert sabotage operations is the central focus of this analysis. We will link the recent significant attack on the Russian strategic bomber fleet conducted by Ukraine to the reason for the low prioritization the Iranian Air Force had faced over multiple decades. It will be explained why the Iranian leadership was hesitant to invest in the 20th century pattern air power concept, inherited from the Shah era, and how solely a critical decision by the Air Force Command convinced the leadership to reassess the resources allocated for the Iranian Air Force. But first, you can help this young channel attract a larger audience by clicking the like button to increase its visibility within the YouTube algorithm. Now let's start with this interesting and complex story. First, it must be clarified that any approach taken to build up military power always depends on the opponents a nation confronts. In Russia's case, the adversaries involved in the Ukraine war, such as the United States, the United Kingdom, and France, all possess tactical nuclear weapons. These weapons can subject the airbases housing the strategic bomber fleet to a permanent risk of devastating nuclear strike. Historically, the immense territorial size of the Soviet Union meant nuclear strikes on such bases were never assured of success, given the vast distances involved. However, the advent of intercontinental range ballistic missiles and their proliferation to members of the NATO meant the strategic bomber fleet of the Soviet Union became the most fragile component within its nuclear triad. Consequently, its importance diminished significantly when compared to intercontinental range ballistic missiles and submarine launched ballistic missiles. Yet, the inherent inertia of a traditional military service like the Strategic Bomber Command ensured its continued relevance and development. And against lower tier opponents, this military branch could still represent a highly useful military asset. But besides the threat posed by nuclear weapons delivered via high-end delivery systems, primarily long-range ballistic missiles, Russia faces another threat against its conventional tactical and strategic air power stationed at airbases. This is a threat against which only a closed isolationist society like the Democratic People's Republic of Korea is immune. Namely, Russia's large border regions which enable smuggling, its open society, but most importantly, once again, the opponents Russia faces. In this instance, the intelligence services of the United States and the United Kingdom, with their extensive history of covert sabotage operations, and the intelligence sensors the United States possesses. These primarily space and air-based sensors grant the intel operatives of those countries or their allies, like Ukraine, vast situational awareness. Their capabilities in the cyberspace domain only augments this dominance in the intelligence and information sphere. All of this enabled the successful strike on distant Russian air bases by Ukrainian intelligence and their covert saboteurs operating inside Russia. It also exploited so-called disruptive technologies such as first-person view quadcopter drones and high-bandwidth satellite communication systems like the United States Starlink satellite constellation. 
Therefore, if these new low-cost components are provided to an intelligence service supported by the United States and the United Kingdom, it creates an immense sabotage threat that even sophisticated countries can hardly defend against. In comparison, a country like Iran faces a very similar threat pattern, but on a larger scale, given that Iran's key regional opponent is not Ukraine, but Israel, with its considerably more sophisticated military and intelligence capabilities. The Iranian military leadership was aware of such risks very early on, even before threats like low-cost quadcopter drones became known. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Aerospace Force, which operates Iran's ballistic missiles, could consistently argue that its missile units and the valuable missile arsenal they possess could be constructed within vast tunnel complexes bored into hard rock. This enables survivability even against nuclear strikes. For decades, this argument of the missile forces proved so convincing to the Iranian leadership that resources allocated to the fragile Shah-era Iranian Air Force were severely restricted. So-called passive hardening of shelters or the utilization of tunnels ensures that low payload and low speed threats can never endanger the assets they contain. Therefore, it represents the most straightforward and secure solution for protection against emerging low-cost threats like drones. Passive hardening is consequently so fail-proof over the long timelines of the foreseeable future that the sole way the Iranian Air Force managed to persuade the leadership to secure resources emerged only in the 2010s. This occurred when the project for the Ogab 44 Underground Air Base project was presented to the leadership. This concept of an airbase where only its runways are exposed was made feasible by the decades-long development of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps tunnel bases, termed missile cities. Above a link to a video dedicated to these nuclear-hardened missile bases. This expertise in civil engineering and construction of sophisticated secure tunnel bases enabled the start of the construction of the Oghab 44 base in the late 2010s. The prospect for the weakened Iranian Air Force was that if this prototype base proved to be successful, it could form the basis of the renaissance of the Iranian Air Force, with more such bases created around Iran. While the old air bases of the Air Force always possessed hardened aircraft shelters protecting the individual high-value aircraft, all its other infrastructure, such as the maintenance hangars and fuel and ammunition depots, were at risk of aerial bombardment. While the relative good hardening of these old bases would be often been sufficient to counter first-person view drone threats, these would already be at risk in scenarios of mass saturation strikes by cruise missiles. A nuclear strike on these conventional air bases would easily disable them permanently. In contrast to that, the only fragile components of the Oghab 44 tunnel air base would be its runways and taxiways. While a nuclear strike could disable the base for a longer period, it could not destroy the high-value asset aircraft housed in the complex primary deep tunnel sections. More fragile components such as the runways could utilize ultra-high performance concrete to reduce their damage risk and enable relatively quick repairs. This means that in a high-intensity conflict scenario, heavy conventional or non-conventional strikes on a base like Oghab 44 by the adversary could disable the base for days or even weeks. But at some point, it could become operational again and restart its operations. These combined features of this type of airbase concept finally convinced the leadership to purchase the Russian Sukhoi 35 air superiority fighter, which is soon to result in the renaissance of the long-neglected Iranian Air Force. Building such tunnel bases for strategic bombers or even airborne early warning aircraft, commonly called AWACS, however, is a different story altogether. Their large size and long wingspan would make the economic construction of a suitable tunnel airbase almost impossible. However, there are solutions to this problem. One such solution is, for example, a subsonic bomber similar to the United States RQ-170 or Iran's Shahed-171. While such a design would have a long wingspan, modern sensors and autonomous navigation systems, combined with a specialized landing gear, could allow such large aircraft to enter the complex sideways enabling space-efficient storage of such large bombers inside a rather standard-sized tunnel airbase. A more detailed analysis of the Agab 44 tunnel airbase will be done in a future video. In conclusion, the high cost of tactical and strategic air power 
means that it is a long-term investment, and the fragility of the supporting infrastructure they require means that a long-term secure solution for their storage and operation is a key requirement for countries facing top-tier adversaries, like in the case of Russia and Iran. The operational limitations were painfully felt by Iran during the 12-day conflict. With the Ogab-44 airbase situated in southern Iran and platforms like the Sukhoi-35 Superflanker not yet delivered or operational, the absence of a northern tunnel complex airbase near Tehran and the lack of an operational fighter fleet in the Superflanker class was a key problem. This conflict illustrated the nature of emerging threats faced by nations confronting high-end adversaries. The employment of advanced weaponry, such as air-launched aero-ballistic missiles, presents a critical threat to all assets within a conventional airbase. These weapons enable the infliction of massive and longer-term damage to runway infrastructure, as observed during the standoff precision strike conducted against Iran's Tabriz airbase runways. Consequently, runways constructed using ultra-high performance concrete, coupled with hardened infrastructure and fighter aircraft sheltered within tunnel complexes, emerge as the most direct and viable solution to counter next-generation threats. This specifically addresses the threat of air-launched ballistic missiles, which have demonstrated the capability to reliably neutralize traditional, legacy airbase infrastructure and its assets. Passive hardened structures are expensive investments that securely protect the expensive tactical and strategic air power of an air force. While Iran is already pursuing the solution, Ukraine's attack on the Russian strategic bomber fleet means that Russia may seek to find a similar solution in the future, a solution that could transform its most fragile nuclear triad component, always at risk from nuclear strikes on their air bases, into a credible nuclear-hardened triad in the coming decades. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.